Coming up on Arirang News, South Korean President Moon Jae-in says this past weekend's historic encounters at the DMZ marked the end of hostile relations with North Korea and the start of a new era of peace. South Korea's finance ministry points to five so-called new industries it thinks will be creating lots of jobs for, for Koreans, fields like artificial intelligence, high-tech materials, and next-generation displays. And as Japan raises tensions with South Korea, the U.S. reminds both sides that they're close American allies and they need to work together for their mutual security in the face of potential danger in the region. It's 4 o'clock p.m. here in Seoul. Thanks for tuning in to our afternoon newscast. I'm Devin Whiting. All sides appear to be pleased with the his surprise historic meetings that took place last weekend at the inter-Korean border. Arguably no one more so than South Korean President Moon Jae-in, who was there as President Trump and Kim Jong-un crossed into North Korea together and then sat down to talk for an hour. Our presidential correspondent Shin Se-min reports. President Moon Jae-in called the recent North Korea-U.S. meeting at the Korean border as an end to hostile relations between the former adversaries. Speaking during a cabinet meeting Tuesday, President Moon Jae-in said the impromptu meeting at the DMZ signifies the start of a full-fledged era of peace and was only made possible due to a fresh diplomatic approach. The president said that for the first time since the armistice was signed 66 years ago, the U.S. leader stepped onto the North Korean soil without an extra security detail. He added that if the two parties kept that moment in mind in future negotiations, it could lead to tangible results. Boon said progress was made possible thanks to the personal rapport between the leaders as well as to reduce border tensions, including the disarming of the joint security area in Panmunjom following a military accord between the two Koreas. Boon also said that in his conversation with his U.S. counterpart, he emphasized the positive effects of the economy and security through the joint inter-Korean Kaesong Industrial Complex, to which Trump expressed support and urgency to establish peace. President Moon, who had lobbied hard for the nuclear diplomacy between the North and the U.S., also gave credit to their respective parties. Moving forward, in order to achieve complete denuclearization on the Korean Peninsula and lasting peace, the president said it was important to use our greater imaginations and think outside the box. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Meanwhile, President Trump has been using a different tone talking about news coverage of his latest summit with Kim Jong-un. Instead of calling it fake news, he apparently thinks it's been covered well this time. Kim Yo-sun reports. President Trump took to Twitter on Monday to say he had a great meeting with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Trump also said he hoped to meet with Kim again in the near future. In a separate tweet, he also expressed his satisfaction over the media coverage of his short meeting Sunday with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un at the DMZ. Thanking South Korean President Moon Jae-in, Trump explained that it was a great call by Kim to have the very well-covered meeting. He added that good things can happen for all. This is a starkly different response from President Trump, who usually lambasts mainstream media outlets for their fake news about him and his administration. Not known for being friendly toward Trump, CNN analyzed that the surprise DMZ meeting was a political victory for President Trump, who has his eyes focused on winning the 2020 election. The article said the DMZ encounter could be a centerpiece of the peace and prosperity platform, which he hopes will win the hearts of American voters. It also says the North Korean leader may visit Washington next year. CNN pointed out Kim would want to strike a deal if he fears President Trump might lose in 2020, as he acknowledges that other U.S. presidents would not treat him the same way Trump does. 
So many predict the working-level nuclear talks that will resume between Pyongyang and Washington in the coming weeks could lead to a first-ever visit to Washington by a North Korean leader. Kim Hyo-san, Arirang News. U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton has dismissed reports claiming that Washington might settle for less than North Korea's complete denuclearization, referring to a New York Times report on Sunday that suggested the administration might accept a nuclear freeze instead. Bolton tweeted that he had never heard of nor discussed such an idea, calling the report a reprehensible attempt to, quote, box in the president. Bolton said there should be consequences. The U.S. has continuously called on North Korea to fully and verifiably shut down its nuclear weapons program before concessions are made, such as sanctions relief. On the anniversary of Hong Kong's return to Chinese rule, a large group of protesters smashed through glass doors and stormed the government headquarters. Now Kim Mo-gyun tells us more. Hong Kong's embattled leader Carrie Lam condemned what she called the extreme use of violence and vandalism by protesters on Monday, the 22nd anniversary of the city's return to Chinese rule. On Monday, protests were seen in the streets of Hong Kong, something that often happens around the time of the annual handover ceremony. But aside from the regular protest march, this year, a large group of protesters swarmed into the main building of Hong Kong's parliament on Monday evening, tearing down portraits of legislative leaders, spray-painting pro-democracy slogans on the walls, and covering Hong Kong's official emblem with black paint. Shortly after, police carrying riot shields and firing tear gas moved inside the legislature and began their crackdown around midnight. Speaking at a press conference on early Tuesday morning, the Hong Kong chief executive expressed regret over the violence and stressed that the demands of the protesters have already been heard by the government. Now, first of all, uh, if the cause of the social tensions that we have seen is a bill to amend the Fugitive Offenders Ordinance, on the 15th of June, I have announced the suspension of the bill. And subsequently, we have explained and elaborated by suspending the bill at this point in time with no timetable and no plan to resume the debate of the bill in the Legislative Council. Lam said that the latest violence shocked a lot of people and expressed hopes that society could return to normal as soon as possible. By early Tuesday morning, hundreds of police finally secured the building following a warning to protesters to clear it. More than 50 people were injured and have been sent to the hospital in the latest protest. Hong Kong has seen hundreds of thousands of people taking to the streets over the past weeks to oppose the controversial extradition bill, a government proposal to allow suspects be extradited to mainland China to face trial. Chief Executive Carrie Lam had already postponed the debate on the extradition bill indefinitely, but protesters want the legislation formally withdrawn as well as Lam's resignation. Kim mo Arirang News. The International Atomic Energy Agency says Iran has followed through on its threat to breach the 2015 nuclear deal by exceeding its permitted limit on enriched uranium. Lee Sung Jae reports. IAEA Director General Yukio Amano confirmed Monday that Iran has accumulated more enriched uranium than it's allowed as Tehran followed through on its threat to breach a central limit of its 2015 nuclear deal with major powers. The agency's inspectors verified that the 300-kilogram cap has been surpassed, adding that Iran started to step up its production back in May. The UK has expressed extreme concern over Iran's breach, adding it was urgently considering its next steps with its partners. European nations had previously warned that any violation would bring severe consequences as the deal allows for the re-imposition of multilateral sanctions that were lifted in return for Iran limiting its nuclear activities. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu also voiced his concerns and urged Europe to impose automatic sanctions on Tehran. On this day, I also call on the European countries to stand behind their commitments. You committed to act the moment Iran violates the nuclear agreements. You committed to activate the mechanism for automatic sanctions that was set in the Security Council. Then I say to you, do it, just do it. 
Iranian state media, citing Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif, confirmed its breach and threatened to continue raising its uranium enrichment. The minister said the Europeans had failed to fulfill their promises of protecting Iran's interests under the deal. However, he noted Iran's measures were reversible if the Europeans began abiding by their promises. Watchers say Iran is seeking to breach the deal's terms in a step-by-step -step fashion to pressure the Europeans to resist the pressure of crushing U.S. economic sanctions. Lee seung Arirang News. Korea's jobs numbers may have been pretty weak over the past couple of years, but a report from the trade ministry suggests there's hope for job seekers in the so-called new industries, like AI. Businesses say they're going to need a lot more people in the years to come. Our ko he explains. Korea's trade ministry has announced that a total of 165,000 employees are needed by 2027 in the five promising new industries, which are considered to be the driving force for the local economy. This will be a 56,000 increase from the number of employees in these industries as of the end of 2017. The announcement is based on a survey done last year of almost 2,000 businesses involved in the industries including next-generation semiconductors and displays, IoT home appliances, AR and VR, and high-tech material. The survey mainly asked businesses about the number of employees and manpower shortages. The ministry says the number of employees is expected to increase the most in the next-generation semiconductor sector, defined as chips with artificial intelligence technology. As of the end of 2017, the number of employees was around 27,000. And by 2027, the number is likely to increase to around 44,000. The increase of around 16,000 people is the largest among the five sectors. The report added that the most jobs will likely be created in the chip manufacturing technology field. The ministry also highlighted the AR and VR sector. During the same period, the number of employees in this sector is likely to increase to around 9,000 from less than 5,000, with an average annual job growth rate of 6.5%. The trade ministry aims to work with related ministries such as education and labor so that companies can easily find suitable workers. Kuruni, Arirang News. The U.S. State Department says there need to be close ties between the United States, South Korea and Japan to solve shared regional challenges like those posed by North Korea. A spokesperson for the department was responding to a written inquiry by Seoul-based Yonhap News Agency asking about the escalating feud between South Korea and Japan that was exacerbated this week by Tokyo's restriction of high-tech exports to South Korea in response to Korean court rulings ordering Japanese firms to compensate the Koreans they forced to work for them during Japanese colonial rule. Despite the tensions, the State Department said the three countries are united in pressuring North Korea to denuclearize. It said the U.S. is always pursuing ways to strengthen the three countries' relations, both publicly and behind the scenes. Data show Korea's consumer inflation last month stayed below 1 percent for a sixth month in a row. That might sound like good news for shoppers, but it's far below the government's target. Kim Dami has this report. South Korea's consumer prices edged up 0.7 percent on-year in June and have been stuck below 1 percent for a half a year now, mainly due to a sluggish domestic demand and expanded welfare policies like free meals at school. June's consumer price increase of 0.7 percent is well below the Bank of Korea's 2 percent target. This is also the longest it has been below 1 percent since the February to November 2015 period. The agency mentions a sluggish growth in service prices as one of the main reasons for the low inflation rate. The service price index last month edged up 1 percent compared to the same period last year, pulled down by rents and public services, which decreased by 0.2 percent each. The agency also pointed to the effect of lower oil prices after petroleum goods prices fell 3.2 percent on year. But consumers may feel that prices are a bit higher as agricultural goods prices in June went up almost 2 percent and livestock and fisheries product prices rose 1.8 percent compared to the same month last year. 
Statistics Korea expects the country's consumer price growth to remain below 1% for the rest of the year, as service prices, including electricity bills in July and August, are likely to stay low. Kim Dami, Arirang News. It's time now for an in-depth look at the market action today, and for that I'm joined on the line by Mr. Daniel Yu, Global Strategist at QM Securities. Mr. Yu, thanks for coming on today. Thank you for having me. So here we are, uh, the first trading day on Wall Street after the G20 summit and uh, a new record high for the S&P, uh, the Nasdaq up by 1%, the Dow also up almost half a percent. What's the story there? Yes, um, as you said, uh, the U.S. market's breaking the peak continuously. Um, on, over the weekend, the United States and China agreed on uh, to restart the trade talks after President Donald Trump offered uh, concessions, including no new additional tariffs regarding the 300 uh, billion won worth of the goods. And also, uh, they have said that there will be easing on, of the restriction on tech company Huawei in order to reduce the tensions. Uh, also, China agreed to make unspecified new purchases of the U.S. farm goods uh, in return for uh, to returning to the negotiation tables. Uh, of course, there's no deadline was set for the progress of the deals, but nevertheless, it seems that the world's uh, two largest economies remain to be in a negotiation terms, uh, and is definitely positive news in, uh, versus the very poor numbers coming through, poor uh, results coming through on on May. So now, uh, with this, uh, this is clearly a positive news for the global equity market, and the global equity market shared on that. Uh, we've seen U.S. market uh, rising to the record highs. Also, most of the other Asian markets uh, did a very strong run, uh, particularly Chinese market did uh, 2% plus rise yesterday. And today, it's pretty much flat, but nevertheless, it seems to be very strong. Shenzhen market uh, showed 3.8% rise yesterday, and today is up again. 0.2 percent. Um, the Nikkei also did quite strong run yesterday of 2 percent plus, and then today it's flat. So everybody is expecting that uh, the possibility of the improvement that related to the trade issues between two countries. Uh, but as for Korea, it seems to be one of the worst performing markets due to the new worries about uh, Japanese ban on selling IT components to Korea. And also there was news about the uh, new drug, a third trial test coming in poor and resulting into a uh, very high level of doubts in regards to the drug industry in Korea. So overall, most of the markets are doing very well, except Korean market at this point in time. Yeah, so let's talk about the uh, issue with Japan now. Uh, those tensions spilling over in the form of uh, harsh new trade restrictions, uh, which uh, it's being said amount to sanctions. What's happening here and where do you see it going? Yes, um, well, Japan will be saying that, that they'll be tightening curves on exports of high-tech materials, use smartphone displays and chips to South Korea uh, amid growing dispute over the South Korean forced to work for Japanese firms during the World War II. Uh, now, this will result into some of the selling, uh, the process will be quite slow uh, for the Korean tech giants, including Samsung Electronics and SK Hynix and LD Display. Uh, the clearly tighter export controls by Japan will have negative impact uh, overall. Now, this step, uh, this kind of steps came because uh, Tokyo were saying that they are quite frustrated with uh, the lack of action done by Seoul uh, over the issue stemming from the top court ruling last October uh, that ordered the Nippon Steel to compensate for formal forced laborers. Uh, now, I think that though uh, the Japanese probably additional uh, policies uh, will not be coming through because uh, this is basically breaking apart of the supply chain in regards to the uh, the tech industry and the political backing in regards to this kind of policy is not going to be very strong within Japan either. Uh, particularly, most of the goods are sold to U.S. And any slowdown in terms of the uh, selling of the IT components and IT uh, semiconductor side will be negative for U.S. And U.S. will probably some put pressures on Japan to not to do this. Uh, and within even Japan, uh, I think this is all about political issues rather than any uh, economic issues uh, where the economic, uh, the, the, the chains that we're seeing in terms of supply chains, it is very tight between Korea and Japan. So. I doubt that this is going to go through in terms of any additional 
new measures to pro- uh, prohibit in terms of selling. So uh, I think this is probably temporarily news uh, that resulting into the shelf price performance. But in a longer term basis, it should be OK uh, with some changes that are happening in terms of policies. Yeah, maybe no new measures, but pretty severe uh, as they are already, it seems. And the Korean government is responding in that uh, spirit. They're going to try to uh, come up with measures to respond, and that could take this to the WTO. Uh, There are concerns this could go on for a while, though, in some quarters. Is there anything else that can or needs to be done? Yes. As you said, uh, the materials to be restricted are some of the three specific related to the semiconductor business. Um, all this is where Japan produces anywhere between 70 to 90 percent of the market share uh, for the semiconductor side. So, so uh, sources of the one of the Korean uh, side have said that uh, they have some rooms for stockpiles, so they can last for a few months. Uh, then they have to probably purchase through other means. Now, this move by Japan seems to be the same as. Uh, if you hear the China was saying that they would try to use the rail earth materials against U.S. in case of detention ex- ex- uh, accelerating. Uh, but if you look at it, China really did not use that policies uh, too uh, uh, further because this will result into losses of the market share uh, for the, these goods. Now, Korea clearly needs to bring this up to the WTO, as well as probably Korea needs to invest uh, quite a lot of money in regards to the production side in terms of the parts related to the semiconductors. So this will probably will be uh, fast. It will probably create faster moving away from Japanese uh, uh, dependency of the parts. Um, we've seen that process happen since 1980s. Um, as the Korea's IT sector's dependencies to the parts to the Japan have been reduced down to quite significantly from the previously around 40% dependency to down to less than 10% now. So uh, we think that this is just going to accelerate the process of that. Uh, so yes, uh, first Korea probably need to bring this up to the WTO. Also, the Korean companies will be probably moving away from the dependencies to Japan, So which will be on a longer term basis even negative news to Japan. So that's why I don't think that Japan will be uh, doing any additional measures, but they'll probably solve this problem as quickly as possible. All right, Mr. Yu, things getting a little tense out there, but uh, hopefully they will be resolved. Uh, We'll look on the bright side there. Thanks for your insights today, as always. Thank you very much. Now, President Moon Jae-in has vowed to make sure that so-called Moon Jae-in care guarantees coverage for 70 percent of all treatments before his term in office is up. The Moon administration's health care plan aims to cover all medical costs except for cosmetic surgery, and it has taken some major steps in that direction. At a gathering Tuesday to assess the progress made in the plan's first two years, the president promised to lower costs for patients getting checkups and treatments that before had not been covered by state insurance, including prostate exams and abdominal and breast MRIs. He said he'll work to enhance the quality of emergency and critical care, areas that are directly linked to people's lives. More children's hospitals will be built as well. Moon said he'll continue to strengthen welfare benefits as part of building what he calls an inclusive nation. The oil exporting countries of OPEC are trying to keep prices from falling, agreeing Monday to keep their quota on supply in place. But experts say that won't be a long-term fix. Also Young explains. The world's major oil producers have agreed to keep production levels low for another nine months, in a bid to stop oil prices from falling. On Monday, the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries agreed to extend oil production cuts until March 2020. This comes amid concerns about the United States increasing production of shale gas, as well as falling demand amid a weakening global economy. The global shift towards green energy amid fears over climate change has also taken its toll on oil prices. The supply cuts, which several non-OPEC countries like Russia have complied with, were placed temporarily in 2017 to stop oil prices from sliding dramatically. Since then, OPEC has been extending the length of the quota repeatedly, keeping the cuts at a volume of about 1.2 million barrels a day. That's about 1% of global consumption. Following the announcement of OPEC's latest extension, Brent crude futures for September delivery added 32 cents a barrel to close at 65.06 US dollars. New York crude climbed 62 cents, finishing at $59.09 per barrel. 
Oil prices have also surged after US President Donald Trump and Chinese President Xi Jinping at the G20 meeting over the weekend agreed to resume talks to resolve their trade spat. However, watchers say oil prices are not likely to rise significantly and that major oil producers will have to find long-term solutions to their structural challenges. Oh Siang Arirang News. That's it from Arirang News at this hour. With more live news coming your way at 7 p.m. Korea time.